Darnell, can you talk about being the uh, the uh, on the committee as a player rep? What you went through in terms of the of the all the plans and stuff for the return to play? Um, yeah, obviously there's a lot that went into it. There's uh, obviously there was a CBA that was was being negotiated as well as uh, return to play and, and all those rules and protocols and whatnot. So there's a lot of phone calls, a lot of uh, discussion, ongoing discussion, and. Um, I'm happy that uh, in the end we're here at camp and ready to gear up for a, a big bubble and a, a big playoff uh, series. Next question for uh, Quinn Phillips. Hi, Darnell. Um, you know, at being the hub city, you guys get the chance to to show off your facilities, but you also have to share them. I'm wondering if you've kind of thought about what it's going to be like knowing that there's other teams in your dressing room. Yeah, it's just the uh, well, circumstances that uh, is a little unusual that, that that comes with this whole scenario. But uh, you know, hopefully, guys, guys get in here and see, um, you know, how well we're treated, how well uh, how well taken care of our facilities are, and, and how nice our arena is, and uh, enjoy it. Obviously, you don't want them to enjoy it too much, but uh, I hope uh, the other teams can come in and see, you know, obviously the uh, the perks of, of playing them. Too. Uh, hi, Darnell. Just to follow up on, on that question from Quinn, I'm just curious, you know, hockey players, athletes are generally creatures of habit. And, you know, now you're you're having to live in a hotel, you're, you're going too soon, and, you know, you're going to maybe practice at, at Terwilliger, things that are a little bit different for you that you've come accustomed to doing uh, here in Edmonton in the last few years. What do you think that will be like, and how does it change your kind of day-to-day -day as you approach games? Well, obviously, it'll be different for everybody, not just us. That you know, obviously, be a little different uh, from the standpoint that we play here in Edmonton. But um, everyone's in the same position; it's uncomfortable for everyone. So um, you're gonna have to change up your routine a little bit. Get used to being in the hotel, and obviously, uh, plan to be in the hotel for a long time because you know, if you're in the hotel for a while for a few months, that's uh, that's a good sign, not a bad one. I understand there's problems with my microphone, so I've tried to change things. Uh, next up, uh, Jason Gregor. Jason, go ahead. Can you hear me? There we go. Darnell, this is a very unique situation, of course. You've been through a lot of training camps, and this is, I guess, like a pre-playoff. With only one game, I know you guys always talk about after a long layoff, you want to work on little things. When it's condensed like this, what do you do to ensure that you're going to be ready for the playoffs? How different is your approach from this camp to any other training camp? Uh, I think it's different in a sense. Like A lot of guys on our team didn't take much of a break. We kept going. Uh, ever since the, the end of the season, kind of just to stay ready. Maybe we weren't in the, uh, you know, the, the peak shape that you're in going into class, but we were, I'd say we were in striking distance of getting there, and that's kind of what these next two weeks are, are all about. So I think you know, physically and mentally, as, as a team, we're all ready and all prepared to, to get this thing going. Um, yeah, obviously with camp being a little bit different with uh, everything gearing up in only one exhibition game. For most guys, I think the one exhibition game is ideal, and it's more than enough. You know, you just want to at this point, get this thing started and, and play. Uh, next question, uh, Tony Brar. Tony, uh, go ahead when your microphone's active. Hey, Darnell, uh, back in September in training camp, head coach Dave Tippett said, to be successful, this team needs to bring its goals against average down. You took a tremendous amount of pride from September onwards in bringing that number down. One, how would you assess uh, how the team has reacted to that challenge from head coach Dave Tippett. And two, uh, how are you looking forward to the challenge, uh, knowing that that number has to come even further down if you guys want success in the qualifiers moving on? Yeah, I think you, know, you can't answer both questions at, at once. Obviously, to have success this time of the year, you have to keep it down um, to a minimum, and that comes down to team structure, team defense. And that's going to be our focus, uh, first and foremost, offense will come. We have more than enough offense within our group. So um, checking and just playing hard uh, on that defensive side of the puck has got to be our, our focus. And it's been a focus of ours, like you said, since September uh, when uh, when camp started. So, um, you know, for us, you guys just got to maintain that focus and, um, to, you know, take it to a whole other level here. As we know, games will get tighter, teams will play harder, and uh, you know, there's a lot more on the line. Uh, next question for uh, Jim Matheson. Jim, as soon as your microphone is active, you can go ahead. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, Darnell, a couple of questions. One, uh, 
How will you be able to, to stop uh, Patrick Kane from getting a couple of points a game? He seems like he's been the most dangerous player against the Oilers for many years now. And the other question is, um, yourself and Ethan Bear, you haven't played together for four months now, but is it just like riding a bicycle and you, and you just step back in as, as your regular partner for most of the, most of the season? Yeah, well, for your uh, first question, I mean, that's, you know, he's an elite player. He's been an elite player in this league for a long, long time. Um, has had a lot of success regular season, uh, playoffs. So he's a, he's a guy that, uh, you know, you have to pay attention to when he's on the ice and it takes all uh, all six guys that are out there on the ice, not just uh, not just one or two. So he's uh, obviously a special player, but that team has a lot of uh, a lot of different weapons, a lot of guys that know how to win. So uh, our focus has got to be to, to come in and play uh, the way we know we can. Uh, as far as me and Bears, yeah, we played together a lot last year. So you, know, you just step into camp, snap the puck around a couple times, and uh, you know just just get that feel back. And I think we have a pretty good understanding of where each other are going to be on the ice, and um, you know, it just gets back to, to communication and, and working together again as many reps and as we can, uh, especially over this next week and getting geared up at, uh, you know, for the playoffs. Hey, uh, one final question, uh, Tony Brar. Tony, go ahead. As soon as your microphone's active, go ahead. Darnell, just to piggyback on Ethan Bear, question from Jim there. Uh, after the scrimmage today, he was talking to assistant coach Jim Playfair for uh, quite a long time uh, while the ice was being scrubbed. So does that kind of embody Ethan Bear? Does he ask a lot of questions behind the scenes, and is, is he always proactive like that? Yeah, Bear's is always looking to learn. I was looking to uh, you know, find ways to, to make his game better, and that's what's, what's made him so good this year, and that's what uh, – it helps him continue to grow his game more and more. So, uh, you know, he's always hungry to get better, always hungry to, uh, you know, improve and, and, and work on areas of his game that uh, he feels like he needs to, to improve. But I see he's been such a such a shining, uh, shining star for us so far this season, and uh, we got to keep it going into, into the playoffs.